These sponges were gathered from the bottom of the sea by one of these three men. What is your name, please? My name is Don Hutchison. My name is Don Hutchison. My name is Don Hutchison. Only one of these men is the real Don Hutchison. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Peggy Cass, Barry Nelson, and Kitty Carlisle. On to Tell the Truth with your host, Bud Collier. Thank you. Thank you, and welcome again to Tell the Truth, brought to you this week by Winston Cigarettes. Good evening, panel. Good, Good evening, evening, Bud. Bud. Oh, my. Got a lot of verve there tonight. Let's put it to work right away, shall we? Please open that first envelope and follow along with me. I, Don Hutchison, am a professional sponge diver. My crew and I remain at sea for as long as three weeks at a stretch. From sunup to sunset, seven days a week, we dive in two-hour shifts gathering the sponges which grow in water from 18 to 150 feet deep. My base at Tarpon Springs, Florida, is home port for the only commercial sponge fishing fleet in the Western Hemisphere. Signed, Don Hutchison. These three gentlemen, as you heard, all claim to be Don Hutchison's sponge diver. We'll start the questioning with Peggy Cat. Peggy? Oh, thank you, bud. Um, number three, are sponges alive? Yes, they are. Yeah. And number one, how long does it take them to die? Uh, about three days. Uh, number two, uh, are there any, like, little, uh, do anything live inside the sponges? Yes. Plankton. Hmm? Plankton, crabs, clams. Uh, number three, how do you rinse those crabs out of the sponges? Well, you have to wait till they die. <clears throat> I see. It's kind of sad. Uh, <laughs> uh, number one, uh, in Greece they have sponges, don't they? Yes, they do. Number two, do they wear that outfit you wear to get the sponges over there? Yes, they do. Number three, what is a loofah? A loofah? I don't know. <laughs> number one, do you know? A loofah is, uh, I believe, a piece of a gourd, the inside of a gourd. Um, number two... Barry Nelson. Hi. Uh, <laughs> number three, uh, is sponge sold by the pound or? Uh, no, sponge is sold by the pieces. Uh, how long does it, uh, t that large piece there, number three, how long would it take, say, that to grow? Well, I think it would take that one just about 20 years. Oh. Number one, what is the name of the boat that you're on? Uh, the Calliope. And how many in your crew? Six. Uh, now, what are some of the uses, number two, of sponges aside from makeup sponges? Uh, washing windows, rubbing down horses. Uh, number three, how long do you stay down uh, on these trips? Uh, in other words, well, no, put it, I'll put it another way. How much of this sponge could you come up with in a day? How much in a day? Yeah. Well, a good day, come up with four or five hundred pieces. Thank you. Kitty. Number one, how can you tell if they're alive or dead? You cannot, except when at and Telef, you clean them. Number two, if you can't tell if they're alive or dead, how come they die in three days, and how do you know? Well, the only thing that actually kills sponges is mud. Number three, what makes them alive? What What's makes living them... in there that, that's alive or dead, as the case may be? Well, actually, they have a skin on them. They have a skin, which you clean off? Yes. Number one, how much does a big sponge cost? Uh, retail or wholesale? <laughs> Retail. <laughs> Retail. Uh, uh, the one the size on the end of the counter over there. Yeah. About ten dollars retail. Thank you. How many varieties are there? Oh, there's the Tom Poston sponge <laughs> and uh, Tom. Thank you. Uh, number three. What's the most dangerous uh, enemy you meet uh, when you're diving? Well, actually, the most dangerous is our carelessness. Yeah, I can see how that would be, but I was thinking of living things, number three. Oh. Well, nothing actually is really dangerous, the sharks and the barracuda, but 
Nothing, really. They don't bother you? <laughs> uh, number two, you know what a grouper is, of course. Do you encounter grouper down there under the water? Yes. How many colors are there that you know of? Four. Four? Number one, uh, you say that you can't tell if a sponge is alive or dead. What's that about the skin that number three said? Does it have a skin on it? The skin is a covering over the sponge that's alive. And that's it. That's all the time we have. So will you kindly get to the business at hand, which is now marking your ballots. Do it at once, without consultation, of course, and vote for number one, number two, or number three. Our team of challengers received $250 for every incorrect vote. All ballots marked, panel? Everybody all set and ready? All right, Tom, for whom did you vote? I was a little hurried there. I wasn't quite. I voted for number one. Uh, he, he, he said the name of his ship wrong, so I figured maybe that's the way they pronounced it on the board. Peggy. Well, I voted for number three, because you know something? Number two keeps doing this to the suit, so he's always not used to it. <laughs> and uh, a loofah is, I don't think it's the inside of a gourd. No. It's like fibers. No, Like no. this. Huh? No. <laughs> You better rest on last week's sheep bed, I think, and let it go back. It turns out I was right. Yes, you were. An archaic form of it, but Thank you popular very use much. today is the other way, and it was kind of a startler, wasn't it? Barry. Well, your uh, vote. Uh, Bud, uh, Peggy may be right. Number two may have a bad tailor, but uh, <laughs> number three kind of referred to the sponges as the skin he'd love to touch, and there was a loving, adoring thing there. All right. Kitty. Well, a tag is a male sheep, and number one said that a loofah was uh, something about a gourd, and it isn't. It's a, it's a terry cloth thing that you put your hand in and rub your back with. No, but it's a part of its fiber. <laughs> 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 and number three said about the skin of the, uh, which I'd love to hear more about, and so I believe it's number three. Well, you got close to unanimity then. Three, three votes for number three, one for number one. Let's go into the area of truth now and see if we can sponge our way through to a successful conclusion as we learn which one of these gentlemen actually is the sponge diver. So will the real Captain Don Hutchison please stand up? Mm -hmm. uh, oh! <laughs> Good job. Good job of fooling, believe me. Number two, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Cy Lyford and I'm a steeplejack. <laughs> Number three, what is your real name and what do you do? <laughs> My name is Cleet Boyer and I play third oh! base. Special joy to have you on the show, off season or on well, season. Doesn't sure matter to us. Well, he sure those questions. Yeah, he <laughs> sure did, boy. That's some and he got in family, those boys. And he picked himself up three flies that he shagged there too. Uh -huh. wow. <laughs> three incorrect votes that you got, and of course the two hundred and fifty dollars each, fellas. That's worth perspiring in that uniform for, I think, because that's a total of seven hundred and fifty dollars mm. from Winston cigarettes, as boy. well as the carton of Winston's on your way out. Thank you, fellas, for sharing an evening with us, and hope you had as much fun as you gave to us. Good night, and God bless you. Panel, rest easy now, and let's all look at this brief film. Let's meet our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Ladia Miller. My name is Ladia Miller. My name is Ladia Miller. All right, fellas, you've had a look. Now follow along. <laughs> of this next one, if you will. I, Ladia Miller, am both a professional model and a teacher of the ancient Hindu art of yoga. Through yoga exercises, diet, and philosophy, one attempts to achieve perfection in both mind and body. While I do give classes for groups of men and women, I also give private instruction in the home. This latter method I refer to as door-to-door -door yoga. Signed, Ladia Miller. <laughs>
Panel, these three ladies all claim to be, of course, Ladia Miller, teacher of yoga. Let's start this cross-examination with Tom Poston. Tom? Uh, I met, uh, as a matter of fact, at Kitty's house one day, I met a lady who had studied in India some yoga, and, and she told us at the time about a cloth, a long piece of cloth that's, that's used in, in, uh, by the Indian yogas. Number one, what is that for, that long piece of cloth? I don't get the... Uh, well, a piece of cloth can be used for cleansing purposes. And they, uh, what, when, when is this done, number two? Uh, you mean the other usage of the cloth? No, I mean at what uh, point in the uh, yoga's uh, daily experience? Uh, well, they use it for practicing the uh, asanas. I don't know what that is. Number three, uh, do you know yoga from India itself? Well, I have studied under an American teacher. Oh, oh, thank you. Peggy Cat. Thank you, but um, number two, is Ladia an Indian name? No, indeed. Oh. Um, number three, is it true that in yoga, when you get up in the morning, you have to sniff up your nose a glass of cold water? Because that's why I lost interest. Somebody closed it. <laughs> Uh, no, I never require my students to do that. Oh, that's nice. Uh, number one, what is the lotus position? Oh, that's the most classical of all Indian positions. You cross your legs and uh, you sit very erect with your spine straight. This is very important. And then it has a deviation. You go into the yoga mudra where you bend forward. That's another uh, one. Number two, a little... Barry Nelson. Number three, how far does yoga go back? Yoga uh, goes back 6,000 years. Can you name a famous uh, yogi? I don't mean Barra, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, uh, back in 320 B.C., Panjalala started it. Yes, I remember him very well. Uh, <laughs> number, number two, how, how long uh, would it take to become uh, a good practitioner of, of yoga? Oh, approximately two years. And how many hours a day would you spend, or how much time a day would you spend perfecting this? Approximately one hour. Uh, number one, does food enter into yoga? Yes, it's very important in the hatha part of yoga. Number three, when you say you're striving for perfection, perfection in, in a mental outlook, what is perfection? Well, it's the uh, ultimate... I'm being metaphysical when I should be physical. <laughs> it's the uh, oh, ultimate good. of all forms. Pardon? It's the ultimate of all forms. The ultimate. Kitty. Number two, what is a guru? A master or a teacher in, in yoga, of yoga in India. Thank you. Number one, does the name DeVries mean anything to you? No, it doesn't. Number three, uh, what is nirvana? That is uh, the supreme being. Thank you. Number one, do you believe also, as our friend told us who came from India, that you should swallow 23 glasses of water early in the morning and then regurgitate it if possible? <laughs> well, uh, that is in India. In the United States, we have to change the methods to a certain degree to adjust to our ways of living. Thank you. Number two, what sort of diet do you recommend? Health food diet. No spices, no... And that's it. So there we have it. Assume the lotus position and mark your ballots. If you will, please, panel, that should make an interesting picture. Mark them at once, without change, and no consultation, as you vote now for number one, number two, or number three. All ballots marked? Not quite. Hmm? There we go. All right, Tom, for whom did you vote this time? Well, uh, I voted for number two. We spent so much time talking about yoga, and I thought number two looked very much like a professional model. <laughs> <laughs> Peggy. I voted for number three. The hair sort of threw me off because it's so pretty and everything. But, you know, she sort of knew about the spiritual side of yoga, and I think it is a very spiritual thing that, to do. So I voted for you three. Barry. I voted for number two, Bud, not just because she exercises, but, <laughs> no, actually, I think she, she has a sinewy kind of uh, body that a practitioner of yoga would have. Number two. And Kitty, what is your choice? I agree with uh, Barry. I think that n number two looks very fit. And uh, although they all have the philosophy quite correctly, I think, um, and were wonderful, I, I voted for number two. Very well. You've done the same pattern as before, the different numbers. Numerologically, it's a little different. Three for number two, one for number three. Let's go with that into the charm circle and see what we come up with, shall we? As we learn now, which one of these young ladies actually is the teacher of the ancient art of yoga? So will the real 
Ladia Miller, please stand up. I must say, I never would have looked at the other two of you and thought you were the least bit out of condition. Not from where I'm sitting in any event. And, uh, but the panel was just a little bit smart there tonight, I'm afraid. Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? Uh, my name is Malia Phillips. I'm a professional entertainer and painter. <laughs> and number three, what is your real name and what do you do? My name is Faye Grand Bear and I'm a probation officer in Elizabeth, New Jersey. <laughs> So we find there was just one incorrect vote, but that's worth $250 from Winston Cigarettes and a carton of Winston's for you. I just hope that you enjoyed yourselves in sufficient proportion so that this was a happy experience for you. It certainly was for us. We thank you for that. Good night and God bless you. <laughs> we'll put the panel back to work in just a minute. In the meantime, here's something you'll enjoy. Now, with your permission, I shall present our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Frank Miller. My name is Frank Miller. My name is Frank Miller. And so, panel, will you follow along as this tale unfolds? I, Frank Miller, am a doctor of veterinary medicine. I also write a syndicated newspaper column called The Wonderful World of Animals. In it, I answer questions about the physical and emotional problems of this country's 24 million dogs, 20 million cats, and other assorted pets from clams to chimpanzees. Pet owners from coast to coast send me over 1,000 letters a month asking such questions as, can you train a snake on a leash and collar? <laughs> do crickets make good pets? What can you do for a dog who gets car sick? And is it all right for my Cocker Spaniel to drink wine? <laughs> Signed, Dr. Frank Miller. Very well, panel. These three gentlemen all claim to be Dr. Frank Miller, veterinarian columnist. And we'll start this time with Barry Nelson. Barry? Thank you, Bud. Uh, number uh, two, what is the largest bone in the dog's body? Same as the human, the femur. Uh-huh. Uh, number one, what is the uh, temperature of a dog, uh, the, the normal temperature? Between 101 and 102. Number three, what is the biggest problem that animals seem to have emotionally in, in the letters that you, judging from the letters that you get? Environment. <laughs> <laughs> their owners. Human, their owners, yeah. <laughs> uh, do you find, uh, number two, that m more cats than dogs have problems? rather difficult to say. I think it's about evenly split between the two. No, all right. Kitty. Number three, which is the most temperamental of all pets? Well, I think probably the cat. Number one, which is the most uh, intelligent of all pets? Well, pets cover a lot, of, a lot of animals, of course. Well, what would you say offhand? Chimpanzee? Yes, I would say chimpanzee. Uh, number two, uh, it says here, do crickets make good pets? Yes, they can, yes. Can you put them on a leash and take them for a walk? It's been done, yes. <laughs> hey, uh, take them for a hop. Is it all right? <laughs> <laughs> is it all right for a Cocker Spaniel to drink wine, number three? It would be all right, medically, yes. In small quantities? Well, it depends upon the weight of the animal. Would it make him drunk? Yes, to drink him up. <laughs> Tom Poston. Thank you, bud. Number two, who is Ed Dodd? I don't know who Ed Dodd. You don't, number three? No, I don't. Number one, do you happen to know who Ed no. Dodd? Well, he's a newspaper man who writes about animals. I thought maybe they would know being newspaper men. Uh, number two, how are dogs uh, uh, identified? By species. No, I mean as to uh, ownership, irrevocably. By the license in most states. And anything done to the dog itself, number three? I don't think I understand. Uh, how, how can you tell if you, a, a dog you, you find is your dog, definitely? Well, his pedigree, you mean, or his license? I well, suppose somebody else claimed him. Oh, I don't know. Uh, thank you. Uh, number one, uh, I understand that crickets tell the temperature. Is that true? 
Well, there is some system whereby the, the number of um, stridulations per second is counted and temperature is estimated. I thought it was by chirps. <laughs> <laughs> Peggy. Uh, number one, where do you live? In California. Uh, number three, what is hard pad? Another name for hard pad. I don't know. Number one, do bed. you know? Hard pad? Yes. Distemper. Uh, number two, uh, what is a scissors bite? I don't know. Oh, but well, uh, <laughs> number, uh, number three, how long is the quarantine to get your dog into England? Nothing going to Great Britain. There's no quarantine to Great Britain. Uh, number one, do you know the length of quarantine to take them to Hawaii? Four months, I believe. Um, number two, um, a king, there's a dog called a King Charles Spaniel that's broken down into two ki separate kinds of King Charles Spaniels. Do you know what they are? Number no. two, please. Only by, uh, only by color. Uh, do you know the names of what the, the... And that's it. That's all the time we have. But you've done well. You've elicited a great fount of uh, knowledge there. Yes. So with it, Gee whiz, there mark your ballot, if you will, please, at once. No change and no consultation. Vote now, please, for number one, or for number two, or for number three. Now you all marked your ballots quickly. Very well, Tom, for whom did you vote? Well, I voted for number one. I'd like that answer about uh, the Ooh. temperature things for the... <laughs> Too late, <laughs> But uh, unfortunately, I think Peggy just remembered that England has a six-month irrevocable <laughs> quarantine for dogs coming in. What I wrote three. I right. meant one. I really did because hard pad is distemper. And uh, and it's in six months for England. Oh, what a fool I am. <laughs> I, know, I know it's one because he knows everything about the dog. Oh, no. <laughs> that shows me well, I shouldn't I wool gather. Anyway. It is not. It's one. I would have <laughs> for one. My life I'd stake on it. <laughs> Barry, if you can top that performance, you may vote. No, I, I voted for one. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you call honor among panelists. <laughs> Barry. I voted for one because I caught Peggy's telepathy. But uh, uh, also he knew about uh, the temperature and uh, about the uh, hard pad and so forth. And uh, number two was very good about the femur, but number three didn't care if the dog got drunk or anything. So <laughs> Kitty, which one do you think is the real one? I voted for number one. He said something about the cricket stradulation. I don't know if I'm even saying it right, but I was very impressed with that word. I'm impressed with the way you repeated it. And number three said there was no quarantine for England, and there is indeed, because that's why they don't have any rabies over there, and why most people can't take their pets. Well, there we have it. We're up at the brink of doom or success right now, and we've meddled around with the truth. Let's see, we've come close to it, and Peggy is miserable. I have three dogs. <laughs> They're going to hate me. <laughs> <laughs> Just whistle so they can't hear you. And here we go to find out right now which one of these gentlemen actually is the veterinarian columnist. So will the real Dr. Frank Miller please stand up? <laughs> You have a question, Tom? Well, I wondered, it is four months to Hawaii. Is it for the same reason as England? Yes. Do they another, not have rabies in Hawaii? Another tight little island, and they're afraid of it getting in. That's, right. That's great. Yeah, well, well, there we have it. Let's find out about the other two now. Number two, what is your real name, and what do you really do? My name is Bill Saunders. I work in international sales. <laughs> and number three, what is your real name, sir, and what do you really do? I'm Austin McLean. I'm president of March and Lundy. We manage uh, financial campaigns for educational institutions and hospitals. Well, thank you very much, sir. And in checking the score, we find it was just one incorrect vote. We have time for tonight. Good night to you, panel, and thank you for those happy chirping. <laughs> we'll see you, of course, next week at the same time, and I'll see you tomorrow afternoon on the daytime show. In the meantime, speaking for Winston Cigarettes, may I say good night and remind you once again, equally forcefully as always, to tell the truth. Good night, everyone. To tell the truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Cotton production.
Tell the Truth has been brought to you tonight by Winston Filter Cigarettes. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. This is Johnny Olson speaking for To Tell the Truth, this program was recorded.